Good morning, Teach Better family. Good morning, good morning, good morning. My name is Jeff. This is my friend Andrea, and we are here to bring you your Teach Better Today morning show, which airs live every day, Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Eastern Time. We're excited to be here. Take a minute right now. I'm about to play about a 28 second commercial. Grab your cup of coffee, your cup of tea, or whatever you're grabbing this morning. Drop in the comments. Let us know where you're watching from and what you're doing this morning. And we'll be back in just a second. All right. Good morning, Teach Better family. Excited to be here. I say, I think I say this a lot when I do this show, but one of my favorite parts of the show is getting to meet new folks and bring new people into our, our community, into our, our family here. And Andrea, I'm excited to have you here with us this morning. Some folks may know who you are. They may already be connected with you on social media or maybe seen you at different places. But for those that don't know you and have never, haven't met you, can you do a quick introduction? This is sort of a broad, who are you? What do you do? What's your background? Where are you coming from? Kind of thing. Sure, sure. Uh, my name is Dr. Andrea Torero Gabadon. I have the pleasure of being a leadership coach. Uh, some of my work is with Teach Plus in Philadelphia, uh, where I train um, teacher leaders. Uh, so that's my day job. I also have worked as a, an instructor of higher education, um, teaching aspiring teachers and aspiring leaders. And I'm also a researcher and educational consultant. I am passionate about working with leaders around creating conditions where educators uh, can thrive and ultimately creating conditions where educators want to stay in the classroom in those contexts. Wow. So that was a whole lot of, and then I also, and then I also, but you're also an author. You didn't even mention you're also an author too. So you I'm do a author. lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so how did you get to the, uh, I guess, multiple questions? Let's see if I can get my thoughts in order. How did you get to the point of where you're now working with leaders and stuff? Sort of your path to there. And then maybe it ties mm -hmm. into there as well as how did you get to the point of writing a book and publishing a book? Mm -hmm. So in terms of how did I uh, get to the place where working with leaders, um, I used to be uh, a school administrator at a high school in North Philadelphia. Uh, and so I did that for many years and really just developed a passion for training and working uh, with teachers in particular. And so when I stepped down from that role, um, I decided, let me work with other leaders around the best parts of my job, which is, again, supporting teachers and creating organizational cultures where folks can thrive. Uh, so I've had the chance to do that for many years and how that led to my book, uh, which is with ASCD. The title of the book is Support and Retain Educators of Color, uh, Six Principles for Culturally Affirming Leadership. I found both through my doctoral work and then my practice oriented work that there were things that leaders can do to create organizational conditions where teachers of color can thrive. Uh, and so that's where my work is focused now, working with uh, building leaders and district leaders around how do we really reimagine spaces uh, where classroom teachers just want to stay and where we amplify their work so they can be excellent. Love that. So it's on the note you said about, we've said retaining culture, having educators stay, obviously in the last bit here we've seen quite a few educators leaving the field so i'm curious to get your thoughts as someone who's like in this what's the what do you think and i'm, I'm sure we could go for multiple hours or days or weeks on all the reasons why but like what do you think is the biggest driving factor right now that's really causing a lot of educators to not feel like they can stay or not want to stay and then maybe if you just want to continue into that and like how do we like start trying to fix that yeah so i mean at its core, why, why are we seeing uh, teachers leave is really related to the high demand and expectations that we have been putting on teachers. And this isn't just since the pandemic, but it's been over decades, right? We yeah. think about the rise of standardized testing. We think about the, the ways in which there are all these curriculum mandates often that are coming down, that are being pushed on teachers and higher expectations around improving student outcomes often in really difficult contexts. Um, so mm -hmm. it's no surprise that we're facing mass turnover and shortage at the same time. 
Now, in terms of teachers of color, the reasons are a little bit different. We find, particularly in the research, and uh, I explore this in the book, teachers aren't leaving because they don't like their work with kids, but they're leaving because of leadership, meaning yeah. that they are finding themselves in organizational conditions where they're burned out, where they're undervalued, where they're experiencing microaggressions and other forms of harm that merely aren't the reason for why they became educators in the first place. So the best way to address these types of organizational conditions for many people is to leave, unfortunately. But there's a lot of things that we can do to stop that turnover. So let's let, let me dive into that because what are what are some, like just maybe just one? What is one maybe? I don't want to say simple. I'm not. I'm not going to use simple or easy, but just one maybe for a good first step, a good first approach to. As a leader, I just heard that and they go, ooh, I wonder if that's what's going on in my building or my district. What is the first step for me to figure out if this is the actual issue? Am I the reason my calm in this place that doesn't feel like a space where these educators, specifically the educators of color who came here for with a passion to help kids, now don't feel like it's a, pay, a place that they can thrive and and reach the kids and do what they came in here for? How, what are the first steps? How do I how do I start approaching this as someone who maybe just literally now listen and realize maybe I'm the problem as a, as a leader? Yeah, that's a wonderful question. I think it's important to say, right, no leader goes into their position wanting for folks to leave, right? Folks go into leadership because they want to support excellent teachers. They want to cultivate excellent teachers uh, and they have that desire because they're passionate about kids, right? Mm -hmm. So the first step is really to think about what is your leadership impact? As we know, there's a distinction between our intent and our impact. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm working with leaders, the first question that I pose is, what is your impact? And then we work from there to really think about what is the data? What are the... Um, you know, what's happening within your organizational culture? How could it be received by folks of color? All right, how do we change that? Because we know we all go into this work with the best intentions. Mm -hmm. It's not about starting with intentions. It's about starting with what is your impact and then backtracking from there. Yeah, I think that's a that's a tough, that's a tough road for a lot of people because they're in their heads we say, Yeah, but I I didn't mean that. I didn't mean it that way. I meant this, or I was trying to do this. And to be able to stop and go, okay, but I that's not how it actually came across. That's not what the impact was. I love the separation there. And that's super tough. So I think, you know, it's it's hard to kind of recognize that, but it's important, I think, to recognize what you said to start off is that you no one goes in intending to create a bad workplace. So understanding that your intentions are still good, that's good. You have good intentions. Now we have to fix the impact so that we can match those two together. Um, that's awesome. I love that. So let's um I, I'm actually not, we're like into it. I'm not even going to play the commercial Ray. You can yell at me later. Like we're already into like the given the value part. So like, I don't, we don't need to reset. I don't think I want to pull like, if there was, what is like uh, to your book, there's six principles in there. Would you mind sharing? Like, what's your, I'm sure you're a fan of all of them, but what's like the, your number one, if you were only allowed to share one of those principles, what's the one that you would have to share with someone? Oh, that, that that's is tough. tough. I, <laughs> I know what I just asked you. <laughs> you can't ask the author that. Uh, <laughs> Listen, the goal is they're going to hear this one, and then they're going to want the other five. So then they're all going to oh, go buy your uh, book, and that's what I'm trying to make happen right now. Well <laughs> done, well done. Okay, okay. Um, well, we got to start at the beginning then. Uh, and principle one is acknowledge that educator diversity matters. Mm. Now, that may seem a bit strange as a starting point because we just talked about intent versus impact. But yeah. what I encourage folks to think about in the book is pause before we even begin to interrogate intent and impact, before we begin to interrogate what's happening in the organizational culture or your leadership style or approach, let's take a step back. Why do you think educator diversity matters? Because at its core, what you believe about something is going to impact your leadership actions. And so we have to start at that at the beginning. Sorry, my dog is barking. So if you hear him, I apologize. He doesn't usually bark, but here he is. So yeah, I, I think that's such a great starting point is like is is realizing like why like why should I even be focused on this work and why should I get into it? Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna give a little bit more. I want you to share another one. Can you share another one of the principles? 
Yeah, sure. Happy to do so. The second one is cultivating reflection and self-awareness. Um, and that goes into some of what we began to talk about really around, you know, what is my leadership impact in this particular school, in this district, in this building? Uh, and so in that chapter, I really walk educators, leaders through this idea of, um, you know, should I address these issues of race and ethnicity and cultural difference at my school or should I avoid it? And we walk through very practical, using case studies and stories from real life teachers that I've collected from across the nation. We kind of walk through how does one begin to disentangle, um, you know, these really complex issues around difference and what does it look like as a leader to reflect and and cultivate your own self-awareness about your leadership impact when right. it comes to difference and engaging across the lines of difference as a leader. Mm. Ah, that's super powerful. So that, so when you are like, I guess when you cause you do this work with, with school leaders and with teachers and, and, and around, now do you work, are you all around the country? Are you primarily in the Philly, Philadelphia range or do you go anywhere anyone needs you? The, I go anywhere anyone no, needs anywhere me. anyone needs you. Okay. <laughs> so I'm curious to know because because when, when we get into topics like this and, and, and when we get into things like race and culture and difference and stuff, it's a it can be sensitive. Obviously, different places, different people, it's a different level of and the open mindedness or the closed mindedness and uncomfortableness or whatever. What is in your experience, what's been the biggest, um, I don't, I don't know if pushback's the word I want, either pushback or maybe more roadblock for mm -hmm folks that where you're with them and maybe they don't necessarily, maybe they do, but you clearly see that there's a need for them to realize these things and, mm -hmm. and start to do this work. What do you think is the biggest? And again, I'm not sure if I want to say pushback so much as maybe this a roadblock, which might lead mm -hmm. to a pushback, but what is that thing that's most commonly stopping them from actually getting into this work and starting to do the, what's, what's actually, what's pretty hard work, but important work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great question. It goes back to principle one, right? So the biggest roadblock to this idea of wanting to understand leadership impact, particularly around teachers of color, is really around what are, you know, do I believe that educator diversity matters? What mm -hmm. do I believe is the role of a Black, Latine, Asian educator, et cetera, right, in my building? And so, you know, I, there's various buckets, but it can look like this in terms of a roadblock. One, folks saying, well, you know, I have a colorblind approach, right? Racial difference isn't really a thing. If we avoid it, if we ignore it, mm -hmm. we're all good. In that case, you're ignoring, right, people's humanity when they show up in the workplace. So you're obviously not yeah. acknowledging that educator diversity matters and that people experience the world differently. differently. Um, the second thing I would say in terms of a roadblock, again, related to principle one, is this idea that, well, educator diversity only matters. Uh, I only really focus on bringing in um, black, brown, right, educators because they meet the needs of my kids. I think educator diversity is only important because I also serve kids of color within my building or my district. Mm -hmm. When we do that, when when I work with leaders and I hear this, right, and it's not explicit language, but it's there's always this context of, well, like, oh, we really, we have, um, you know, waves of immigration to our district, or we're really trying to bring in X type of educator because we're seeing a surplus or an increase in X type of student. When there's this mm -hmm. correlation, right, where there is a perceived need of a particular type of educator because of a particular type of student, that raises a red flag. And what that says to me as someone who does this work and is passionate, again, around creating conditions where folks of color can thrive, it says that you're tokenizing folks of color and you're making yeah. the misguided assumption that teachers of color are only good for students of color. Yes, students of color uh, experience certain socio uh, socio-emotional and academic um, benefits right? When they are uh, taught by teachers that reflect their background. But the reality is that all kids are better when we have a racially diverse workforce. When we have someone who's in front of kids that can disrupt stereotypes, show them a third way, help them expand their worldview, right? Um, 
disrupt assumptions and, and problematic stereotypes that have been influenced maybe by social media or, you know, just through everyday observation, right? So all kids are better. And when we understand that all kids are served well, when we have a racially diverse educated workforce, that's a good, like, we can move forward from there. When you understand that we need to create conditions where all folks are um, treated humanely and honored and their inherent dignity is uplifted in the workplace, now we can actually get the work done because you recognize that educator diversity matters. Yeah, that's that's powerful. And I think, you know, so often we hear when we, on like very top level discussions around diversity, we hear about representation being so important, which you touched on, right, with the kids. But if that's the only reason to your point, like we, we you really, you take away the fact that no, these pe- these are educated people, educators who are passionate, who have different backgrounds than maybe these people over here or these over here, which is why it's beautiful, why it's important, because to your point, open it up. And I, I love that. I think that's huge. And, and, I'm, and, and as you were saying, I'm going, yeah, that's probably where, unfortunately, so many are They're like, well, we're seeing it when you were talking about the influx of, we have a couple of clients that like they've had an influx of of immigration and they're like, we have to do not, we haven't heard specifically that type of language, but doing certain things. I'm like, yeah, but those things are good. Even if you didn't have that. So like, it's good that you're now moving there, but the important part is understanding that like, maybe we should have anyway. And this just happens to be the the reason now, but like, cause then my, cause the fear is if I place it to you, your point, I say, well, I need, I need more black educators because I now have more black students. What happens if it shifts back and you don't have as many black students? Are these black educators now not as important? And that's just, in in my mind, that's just silly, but I I understand that that's definitely not the way everyone thinks. So that's powerful. Okay. All right. I love it. Um, I could, I could do go, go ahead. What do you got? (laughs) No, I want to go back to that point. I'm excited about it. Go ahead. (laughs) No, I want to go back to that point you made, particularly around Black educators, I think, because again, it's around what is your leadership impact? We have to disaggregate impact from intent. When we bring folks in with the assumption that, all right, this demographic is going to impact these students, what that does, again, is tokenize them. So often, particularly Black educators, and we can talk about other ethno-racial groups as well, they're painted as... uh, you know, the disciplinarians, they're, they're painted as those that can maybe manage classrooms better, or, um, you know, you're good to, you know, connect with this family, right? We're, we're, we're pigeonholing folks and we're not acknowledging or creating space for their excellence and their genius to surface beyond this very small box that we've put in, Mm -hmm. uh, put folks into, um, And again, imagine that type of treatment year after year after year where you're given maybe particular types of students because of assumptions around, oh, well, you're good. Let's give them to Mr. So-and-so that he knows how to deal with them, like um, limiting leadership opportunities. Oh, well, so-and-so is a really good disciplinarian, right? Like, let's not give them that that position as the instructional coach. Let's give it to someone Mm -hmm. else. Again, because of misguided assumptions right? That at its core, disregard someone's humanity and why they came to the work in the first place. And so we can't be surprised again, if, if, if we're creating these conditions, if folks then want to leave. Yeah. I mean, I I think, I don't think anyone's delusion to think that teachers and educators are getting in the field for the money, right? But there is an inherent piece of needing to feel valued for what you bring to the table and the passion that you have. And when you do that, when you tokenize someone and you put them in this box of what they do, at some point they're going to realize that that's where you've put them. And, and yeah, it's going to, it's going to, like, you're not going to stay somewhere when you don't feel valued, where you don't feel to your point that your excellence has been, that you're not getting the opportunities because I'm only good with this student or these students or that type of behavior or whatever it might be. Uh, super important work. Uh, it is I, I can only imagine how challenging your job is, um, but I, I love that you're doing it. I love the passion that you speak about it uh, with about it because this is super important and we're a long ways away from all the work that needs to be done in it. So I appreciate you so much for what you're doing. I appreciate you sharing some with us today. If you are watching or listening, make sure you go. I, I pulled up so I say the name correctly. Support and retain educators of color. Six principles for culturally affirm, affirming leadership. And that is on Amazon. You get it as Amazon the best place to go. 
Uh, Amazon, you can go directly to ASCD.com okay. or I'm a big fan. If you have a small business bookstore in your neighborhood, I know if you're in Philly, Uncle Bobby's carries my book. Please support small business if you can. Oh, I love it. Great, great tat there, uh, a touch there as well. Uh, and you can follow Andrea on social media. That's your X handle there right below her uh, her her video there. Let's see her face. That just sounds weird to say it, even though I just said it. It's right there. This is what we do on this show. It gets off the rails by the time we get this far into it. And if they're still watching, hopefully it's because they understand what Jeff's going to do. I appreciate you. I'm really excited to have, have you now connected to our community and here. I hope that folks reach out to you and connect with you and get more and more familiar with the work that you're doing. I hope this isn't the last time we have you on. I think there's so much more we could talk about and dig into. And uh, you know, if we can help support the work that you're doing, I think it's super important. So thank you for your time, for your, for your awesomeness, for your knowledge and everything that you're doing. We appreciate you a whole lot. If you're watching, uh, we appreciate you as well. If you're listening to the podcast, thank you as well. Make sure you all go follow Andrea and share if you need any help from us. And we will be back tomorrow morning. So thank you. Appreciate y'all. Hey, Teach Better community. Thank you so much for joining the Teach Better Today morning show every single weekday at 7 a.m. Eastern. We have so many resources for you outside of this live stream at teachbetter.com, including blogs, podcasts, and professional development that will bring our team to your school. Wherever you are listening from this morning, please make sure you are sharing and celebrating the incredible educators in this world. And hey, if you are listening over on a podcast to Teach Better Talk, we would love a five-star review. <laughs> the comments are always so entertaining. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow.